so I'm going to open the meeting. It's 702. This meeting is being held remotely as an alternate means of public access pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, temporarily amending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the town of Hingham in accordance with the open meeting law. If any participant wishes to record this meeting, please notify the chair at the start of the meeting in accordance with Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20F, so that the chair may inform all other participants of said recording. So um, this meeting is in fact being uh, recorded by the town of Hingham. And um, just with a wave of a hand, or could you just uh, note to our host, uh, Megan Demore, if you are also recording. I am not recording, Kevin Burke. Okay, you don't have to say that, that's okay. Um, oh, the other thing is, um, uh, I went to the open law, open meeting law meeting last month and we have to have a roll call, a, a roll call by voice at the beginning of the meeting. So I'll just start and I'll just go across my screen and I'll just say your name and you can say present or I or, here. So uh, Larry, here. Uh, Charlie? Here. Megan? Here. Vicki? Here. Kevin? Here. Kirsten? Here. And Bob? Here. Great. Okay. Um, before we get to the bell tower, does anybody have any announcements that they need to make or, or want to make? Okay, great. Okay, so first up on our agenda um, is there's a request from Martha Ryan. She, she is the proponent of, of the Bell Tower project and she um, and her team are looking for another extension. And Martha, I, I assume you're here and um, just come before us. And I know you, you um, had an extension till this month and you want to extend it. So just tell us about it. Is she here? Unmute her. Okay, I think I'm here now. Thank you. Okay, you are. You are actually here. There you are. I Hi, am. Martha. I am. Thank so, you. Yep. Yeah. Tell us. So, um, uh, we we wish it were a perfect world, but unfortunately, we've um, continued to experience delays on the Bell Tower project. Um, we have uh, instituted meetings with the foundry every two weeks to review and see where we're at and. Um, you know, we're eagerly <laughs> waiting completion, but we are requesting another um, extension. Um, and I think to be, uh, you know, we were thinking maybe June 30th as a new date, if that was possible. Okay. okay. Um, I have no problem with it. I, I um, and th this is like stuff coming over from the UK, right? So yeah, the project, um, yeah, sorry, I uh, sort of take for granted uh, that people know, but yeah, we're, we're working with, um, well, our foundry is working with um, people who are providing services from um, England, from the wheels come from overseas. Um, we have consultants that would come from overseas and it's just between that and materials, I think it's just taking a lot longer. Everything seems to just be going slower and taking longer than anticipated. So um, I, I think it's definitely pandemic related, um, consistent with what we're seeing sort of across the board. Right. Um, anybody else on the committee? Um, feelings, thoughts? No, this is, I, I, I'm probably one of the um, ones on the committee that has been involved with this since the beginning. And clearly this is a project that, um, that COVID really does impact the fact that uh, we have people coming from different places and it's a specialized uh, procedure. So I have no problem with giving a, uh, an extension. Others? This is Charlie, I, I have no issues. And Bob? I'm good with it. Okay, so that's a majority. I want to suggest, Martha, do you want to go out to October 1st of 2022, just because, you know, the pandemic seems a little better now, but who knows, and th this way you don't have to keep trekking before us. I, I think that would be a great idea, just there's so much that's out of our hands right now. Um, that way you wouldn't 
need me interrupting the CPC meetings as often. You're not interrupting. So okay. are, are we okay with October 1st? Does anybody want to address October 1st versus June 30th? It just- um, Kevin Burke. Yeah. I make a motion that we extend the time to complete the project by to October 1st. Okay. I second it, Kevin. Okay. Um, so we have to do a, a, a roll call. So Larry, aye. Charlie? Aye. Bob? Aye. Vicki? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Kirsten? Aye. And who am I missing? Me. Uh, and I'll go aye. Oh, Megan, yeah. thanks. Okay, so we're good. Okay, so you're all set, Martha. Go watch Thank Jeopardy. You. Have a wonderful evening. Yeah. Baseball. <laughs> okay, take care. Um, so um, now uh, we're going to get to this discussion of the final applications. But before we get there, um, I got a call from the town administrator, Tom Mayo, this afternoon. And he suggested, have, he listened to our last meeting and he was fine with it. He thought it proceeded accurately and well and, and all of that stuff and that everything was handled appropriately. But he felt that just to sew it up, to make like extra, extra sure that we're all on the same page, even though I said a couple of times, are we on the same page? Are we all good with this? And nobody objected. He thought we should take a vote to say that the preliminary projects that we said were good to go forward were the ones we said to, that were good to go forward. And, he, and to say that projects not mentioned here are the ones that we agreed were not eligible to go forward to final application. And um, he looked at the wording and, and town council looked at the wording and there was a little back and forth. So we arrived at a certain wording and it's a little bit confusing because this doesn't speak at all to the discussion we're gonna to have tonight about eligibility of final applications. This is just confirming what we agreed were the preliminary applications that were allowed to go forward. And um, Vicki's gonna make this motion because I think as chair, I'm not supposed to make a motion. And it's gonna, the confusing part is she's gonna read this list and you're not gonna see some of these as final applications, even though they were eligible as preliminary applications because some project proponents just decided not to come forward with final. But the list just means these are the ones we are agreed could go to final. So um, I, thought, right, it well, I yeah. thought it made sense. And so what we'll do is um, Vicki will make the motion. We'll see if somebody seconds it. And then I'll ask if there's any discussion. And if there is, we'll have discussion. And if there isn't, we'll vote. And if there is discussion, we'll vote after the discussion. So Vicki. Thanks, Larry. All right, Larry. I mean, we did have a good discussion, I thought, last a meeting. And so I will make a motion to vote to agree that the following preliminary CPC applications, which were determined to be eligible to proceed to the final applications be considered tonight. Um, this vote doesn't obviously guarantee that any of these final applications will move forward for consideration, but the eligibility of the final applications will be determined at tonight's meeting. So the final applications we agreed on at last, uh, month's meeting to be considered for potential eligibility tonight are the following. The Sons of Italy, the renovation and re restoration of the lodge, Hingham Housing Authority, Scotland Street House and Building Envelope, the Hingham Housing Authority, the uh, Thaxter Park Fire Door uh, uh, Open System, uh, the Hingham Housing Authority, Scotland Street, the Heating System Replacement, the Hingham Historical Commission restoration work to the Tree and Park Barn, uh, Hingham Sports Partnership uh, with Hingham High Schools, the Health and Wellness Center, uh, the Hingham Affordable Housing Trust uh, Opportunity Fund, the Habitat for Human uh, Humanity, the two homes on Whiting Street, uh, Hingham Girl Scouts to um, create a ADA accessible to the Girl Scout House, uh, the South Shore Country Club, New Pool, and Hingham Recreation Commission's the uh, new construction of a Cronin hockey court, and Hingham Recreation Commission's 
uh, total reconstruction of the Cronin basketball court. So those are the um, those are the applications that we discussed last uh, month that um, we want to put forward in eligibility at least for this vote. Does anybody second, second that motion? I do. Charlie, any discussion? Yeah, I'm actually very confused by all of this. I have to say, uh, is town council on the one of the phone numbers? I had heard that he was going to be on this call. I have no idea. Is Tom Mayo here? Uh, Tom told me he would not be attending tonight. Okay, uh, I'm wondering if any, are there any select board members, any ADCOM members uh, who, who maybe want to speak to what is supposed to be going on tonight? And my understanding was that uh, town council had said that uh, all of the preliminary applications were supposed to go through to this point. And I am willing to be wrong, but um, I, I feel like this is not what I was told. And this is definitely not what Housing Authority was told. Housing Authority was told that all of the applications that they submitted should go through to the final application process. Okay. And I do, I do have email from the town uh, about that. Other comments from our committee? I thought on the uh, fire doors that, that uh, Judy wanted further study or requested further study on that. Uh, and I don't know whether further study was done. So I assume that the list that was read was the list that goes through to potential final application. Yes, and the fire doors was on that list. Right. Oh, okay. Right. You know, our conversation last month, this is Vicki, um, yeah. was the eligibility. I mean, there were clearly some projects that were ineligible to go forward. I mean, I could... Um, point out some, but I don't want to go through the list because I don't want to point out some without others, but some were just clearly not eligible by CPC standards. And um, I mean, it, it, town council or Tom Mayo, it's not about what they say or don't say, it's about what CPC says. And some projects just can't go forward because they're just not eligible. And these are the projects <clears throat> that um, meet the criteria for eligibility. I mean, that doesn't mean they go through. That doesn't mean we vote them in. It means they're eligible to go forward. And I thought we had a good discussion last month as to eligibility. So, um, I mean, that, this is where I thought we were tonight. Okay. I actually think that there is some question about what's eligible and what isn't. And it's not my understanding from the state and from the research that Housing Authority has done is that it's not actually until the final application that we decide what's eligible or not. And my understanding is that that was confirmed by the town. Um, and it's kind of unfortunate that there's nobody from the town here to say whether that's true or not. Uh, I also, my understanding is that um, there was also some question about how well the last meeting was run. So I'm, I'm not sure that that town agrees that it was, it was great, but I'm a little disappointed that there is no one from town uh, at the town level here to, to talk to that. Um, is there anybody else on the committee who would like to discuss? Uh, Kevin Burke here. I, I apologize. I think for the first time <clears throat> ever, I was unable to attend last meeting, so I am somewhat at a disadvantage. <clears throat> My only comment is that um, when I looked at the agenda, it was not clear to me that uh, eligibility or preliminary eligibility would be discussed or determined at that time. And so um, my thinking is or was that, that that should be a determination that comes at a later date. And I would rather myself rather have all of the applicants go forward and when they make their final presentations that could be vetted and they could be determined whether a project is eligible or not. Um, but again, I apologize. I was not at the last meeting and so I'm somewhat at a disadvantage. Thank you. Okay. So Larry, can I just speak, you know, as um, unfortunately with history and I wish we still had a secretary and uh, people who were um, more knowledgeable about CPC, but one of the purposes, we didn't, uh, 
Originally, there was no preliminary application. The purpose of the preliminary application was so that projects could be vetted, looked at, see if they were <coughs> eligible, because um, way back when, final applications went through the entire project and then were uh, found to be ineligible, and a lot of time was taken away from the projects where people were actually eligible. And that was the purpose of a pre-application. So pre-applications, the purpose of pre-applications is so that the liaison can meet with the person or the project, bring forward what it is they're doing, go to the fact that we have criteria of the recreation, we have housing, we have open space, we have historic projects, and if they don't meet eligibility, I mean, a lot of people can bring projects forward, but that doesn't make them eligible. And that's the purpose of the pre-application. And I thought that that was very clear. And um, so it, it really makes sense to have a pre-application so that the committee had the opportunity to take a look at applications and use the criteria to make sure that there are some projects just aren't eligible. That's the point of pre-application, so. Other comments? I don't know if that um, Kevin, Kevin Burke here. My, my only comment <laughs> was sort of to the process. Um, if as a committee or commission, we determine that we have to do that initial vetting, I, I just would have preferred that it be clearly stated in the agenda that you know we have whatever. We have 10 projects. It appears that these three projects are not eligible for the following reasons, therefore, uh, we are going to have a vote on these three projects uh, so that everybody has a chance to look at it, vet it, think about it. It just seemed rather opaque to me. I didn't even know that the issue was going to be raised. And, and so that's more, as I said, a process issue. I, yeah. I have no problem with, you know, adopting a procedure that, uh, as Vicki says, would do an initial vetting. I just think it should be a little bit clearer. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody, Charlie? Um, yeah, I, I think I, I agree with Vicki that, you know, if we, if we need to adopt a procedure for going forward, I do think we had a very productive discussion in our last meeting. And I, I did think it was clear. We do also have the benefit of, as the meeting was recorded, um, we have the benefit of going back to, to, to look at it. Um, so that, that option is certainly available to those who weren't able to attend. Anybody else on our committee? Uh, my last point is that that's good after the fact, but if you're uh, determining how, whether you have to break away from something else to attend, you look at the agenda and you're given adequate advance notice of what's being discussed or determined. And just in my opinion, the agenda did not make that clear. And that's my only point. And I don't, I, I wanna be clear. I'm not suggesting that anybody was trying to be unclear or trying to advance something without adequate notice. I just don't think it was proper uh, notice. And I, I, as I say, that could easily be through mistake, inadvertence, neglect, not through any intentional or nefarious act. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? And I guess by anybody else, I mean Kirsten. I think you're the one person who hasn't said anything and you're not required to. I just want to make sure. I have a question in that I thought we had a good discussion the last meeting and it was pretty clear. Um, but we had a few that we needed further information on to determine whether they could move forward. So, for example, Sons of Italy. Um, They're the on the list. HSP. So has the determination, so I'm confused. So is the determination being made that they cannot move no. forward no or we're yeah. gonna let them go to final and then determine it i'm just trying to figure out so we're saying some we don't know whether they can move forward or not we're gonna leave that to final but some we're gonna say no they can't go to final yes and i and i but for all information that we we don't we haven't fully received and vetted correct your confusion is understandable and what you're articulating is exactly what I feared was gonna be the confusion. So let me explain it and I wanna address some other people's comments too. So 
this vote that is being recommended to us to take is just a vote confirming that what we said could go from preliminary application to final application are the ones that we agreed on and that anything not mentioned in this list, there'll be no further discussion on. And in fact, um, when we go to take a vote, we have to add that phrase back. We have to add that. We have to amend the motion, Vicky, to add that phrase in. So, Kirsten, the Sons of Italy and the others that you mentioned, and two from the Hingham Housing Authority, we needed more information. So we decided as a group that they can go forward from preliminary to final, and they're here tonight to get discussed. And tonight we'll make an, a determination of whether they're eligible to go further than tonight through the whole uh, funding cycle process. Does that answer it? Yes, so it seems that we didn't need anything on the agenda because we are just now, we, we had already voted the last time for what yes. we were moving forward. So- well, we didn't vote. We, we, well, we it didn't need to be it. voted because it was under your leadership position with regards to what could be and not be, correct? Yes, except I believe that I ceded that authority to reach consensus that we all agreed on what could go forward and what couldn't. Right. So I don't believe it needed to be on the agenda. I, I'm, I'm good. Well, let me let me speak to the agenda issue, and I have a couple of other issues I, I want to speak to. And anybody else can certainly talk after I'm finished. We don't have to vote until we all are ready to vote. So I've been advised that the uh, agendas I'm putting out are correct. Um, um, everybody, you know, people watch what you do and I've been told I'm doing them correctly. And Kevin, I don't have the agenda from last month in front of me. So I, I don't wanna swear on a stack of Bibles, but I'm pretty sure I said, we will review eligibility for preliminary applications and come to a consensus about which ones can go forward. And you all had all of the preliminary applications. And I never would have said in an agenda, certain ones don't look eligible and we need to discuss in depth because I didn't want to, that would be putting my opinion out in front of the consensus of the committee. So I never would have gone that route. So in my head, I understood everybody on our committee had all of the preliminary applications and they knew that's what we were gonna discuss and decide on. What the one thing we didn't do was take a vote. We, I, we did it casually. And, and what the town administrator in conjunction with town council is recommending that we take a vote saying, these are the ones the committee agreed can go from preliminary to final and any not mentioned, um, you know, will not get further consideration. So that's one thing. Now, Megan, I hear you. So we, we both feel we heard different things. And we're both very confident that we heard correctly. The issue is I can only run the meeting that I was told to run literally about four hours ago and, and, and um, proceed the way I was advised to proceed. Nobody said all the preliminary applications have to be considered and go forward. In fact, I couldn't imagine how that could have been said because that's the whole reason we have preliminary applications and it says right on them when people do a preliminary application, someone will get back to you and let you know if it's eligible. So I hear you, I believe you. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, honestly, right now, I feel like the town no, I'm is not, dropping. I'm not quite, Megan, oh, I'm not sorry. quite done speaking. And I, but I, I, can, I can only do what I feel very strongly I was told to do. And I would mm -hmm. say that we are going to go forward with this vote. And I would say that if I got something wrong, we'll return to it again. Mm -hmm. But now, so please. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to say that right now, I feel like the town is dropping the ball. And I'm, I'm, I'm planning on escalating the way that the town is handling this, honestly, um, because I've, you know, that, I mean, that's basically all that I'm going to say. I know that there are selectmen on here, ADCOM members, um, and, and what's happening on this committee is not, is not legal. 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm actually getting texts from people, from other people who that uh, some people are trying to talk, I guess, except since they can't unmute themselves, they can't say that they want to talk. But I, I'm not sure if the hand raise function works or what. I actually don't even know who's trying to talk. So I'm not, I'm not entertaining comments from the public at this time. And, um, I, and I've been told when I went to the open meeting law meeting that I actually don't have to entertain comments from the floor at this time. So for right now, I am, I've made a decision to keep the discussion internal. It's our decision. It's the committee decision. And Quite frankly, the meeting is already getting away from us. I thought that this part was gonna go fast. I thought we were pretty clear on which ones we agreed could go forward, certainly by majority consensus. And um, I, I think if you feel strongly that I've gotten something wrong or the town is getting wrong, you should follow up. But I'm, I'm gonna keep going with the meeting um, the, the way that I've been advised to go with it. So I, I um, does Larry, I, do, do you need to hear the whole motion again? I thought Charlie seconded it. I need to hear the motion, but you need to, there's, there was a yeah. phrase in there that said something like, these will be considered and the other ones will not have any further consideration. It was like right up at the top. Is it in your- Although we decided last month, the preliminary applications would be allowed to go forward. And then Gus, dark ineligibility of. No, no, no. There's something I mean, that says. The motion. All right. Yeah, can you read the motion? Some of these things are ineligible. End of story. <laughs> no, no, no. But eligible. it needs to be in the. We're voting on. In the motion. So yeah. I'm making a motion yeah. to affirm that the following preliminary CPC applications that have been determined to be eligible to proceed to final applications can be considered tonight. Wait, yeah, keep going. And that all other preliminary applications shall not be further reviewed due to their ineligibility. Would you like me to add those words due to their ineligibility? Well, it was reviewed by Tom and town council. So I think you all should right. yeah. Reviewed by town administrator and town council. And this okay. vote does not guarantee that final applications will move forward for further consideration. The eligibility of the final applications will be determined at tonight's meeting. The final applications we agreed to consider to go forward are, and then I can read the list. Why don't you read the list again, just for Great. everybody. Yeah. Sons of Italy, renovation and restoration of the lodge. Hingham Housing Authority, Scotland Street House, the building envelope. The Hingham Housing Authority, Thaxter Park, fire door open system. The Hingham Housing Authority, Scotland Street heating system replacement. The Hingham Historical Commission, restoration work to the tree and park barn. The Hingham Sports Partnership, Hingham High School Health and Wellness Center. The Hingham Affordable Housing Trust, Opportunity Fund, Habitat for Humanity, Building Two Homes on Whiting Street, the Hingham Girl Scouts to make Girl Scout House um, ADA accessible, and the South Shore Country Club New Pool, Hingham Recreation Commission's uh, construction of a new Cronin Hockey Court, and the Hingham Recreation Commission's new construction of the Cronin Basketball Court. And those are the um, projects eligible to go forward. To the final oh. application. So I'm not a, I'm not a maven on Robert's rules. Does Charlie now need to second that amended motion? Well, was it amended? Was it amended? Well, she made we amended it, it by review by town, Tom Mayo and town council. But there was also the, another phrase in there. Yes. Okay. So does Charlie need to re second the motion? Yes. Yes. Okay. So Charlie, can you re second? Again, I second the motion. Okay, so I, I think it, it's time for us to vote. So I'm just going to go in the order. In so which in, I... after the second, we now can continue discussion vote. on the amended <laughs> okay. motion. Okay, if you if you like. The, the only question, uh, uh, listen, I am the neophyte here, folks. This is my third meeting. 
I have a question to Megan Burr. You made a comment that you thought what we were doing was illegal. I mean, it is, we... yes. Okay, I'd like to understand that more clearly. I mean, at the very least, what's happening right now is that Larry has a motion that that he that he and Vicky agreed on ahead of time, which isn't supposed to happen. And now he's called on Charlie to second it. And this all seems a little bit pre-organized uh, to my head. Maybe it's not. Maybe that's just a coincidence. Um, but I certainly think that that's a little bit sketchy. Uh, there hasn't really been discussion. Um, if Kevin is right that these things should not have been voted on at the last meeting because they were not on the agenda, um, I, it's pretty convenient that Larry had already checked the last Megan, agenda. they're on the agenda. I just looked at it. It's clearly <laughs> on the agenda. Okay. Um, I Yeah, I, I don't have it in front of me. I was just going with what Kevin said. He's a lawyer. Um, and I... You so know, am I'm, I. Okay. Honestly, right now, I, I, you know, um, I, I don't even know. You know, there's, you know, there's been conversations with with town council with various things. If they're telling you something different than what they're telling me, then I don't really know what can be said. I just want to. Um, he said one thing. And I, oh, I I said to Tom my, Tom Mayo. You know, he called me and asked me about this vote. And I said, Tom, it's not really for me to make a motion because I'm the chair. And he said, you can talk to one other person on your committee. That's not breaking open meeting law. So that is why I reached out to Vicki. I got permission to do that just in case there was something that didn't feel quite kosher about that. I, I really bent over backwards to try to make sure I, I did everything right. I felt we were clear last month. So I didn't even understand the need for this, but he and town council well, thought it was a good idea. So that's why it's here. Out of curiosity, did, count, did town council have anything to say about you being the only one who was supposed to decide which which things met the requirements uh, to, to go forward? Because you were pretty clear about that last month and, and that is something that I don't think is true. Okay, so we didn't get into that. This, I didn't get into that with Tom Mayo or with town council. But what I sent you back, a couple of things, what I sent you back and what I copied everybody on, I think is kind of indisputable. It says- Well, it's actually not because Megan, it shows you mind, your edits. Megan, do you mind if I finish? Sure. Is it okay? Yeah. So um, it says the, um, it says something almost verbatim like the, the, the CPC chair with or without in concert with the administrator will decide which uh, preliminary applications are eligible and could go forward. And by the way, I am the administrator as well as the chair. I, we don't have an administrator anymore. So that's why sometimes you guys will get an email from me that might seem like it's breaking open meeting or like the one I sent you back with that wording, but that's an administrative capacity. Like folks, here's the wording. Mm -hmm. This is so, the CPC process. I just want to clarify, this is the document that I sent you multiple emails about asking to put on the agenda for this meeting and you completely ignored my emails. So I found out about that too. So when a chair puts out a, a preliminary agenda, mm -hmm. he or she is allowed to ask for suggestions for things to add to the agenda that mm -hmm. um, for consideration, but mm -hmm. the chair doesn't have to put those things on the agenda if he or she doesn't want. And I decided not to. And the reason is what I felt was this year's preliminary applications were done. And in fact, we acted as a committee. It wasn't the top down decision, which decisions were gonna go forward and which were not. I feel as you clearly do Megan, and I'm sure many others on our committee and many others in the room that it shouldn't be one person's decision. It should be a committee-wide decision. And that's why I really took pains to reach consensus last month. Now we're moving on to final applications. I don't want to go backwards. We're done for this year. We were all in on the decision. I would suggest to the committee that if they want to change things in process or instructions, meet next summer and go through stuff that you want to talk about and take votes. We have an extremely compressed schedule. You know, after tonight, other than the site visits, 
we're going to meet three more times before we vote. Three more times after tonight. It's not a lot of time. And I don't want to devote that time to let's talk about changing the wording when it, it's okay, not excuse me, Larry. Anymore. This is Vicki. I'd like to request that we take a vote. And I'd like to request that we take a vote on taking a vote. We're now uh, you know, 40 minutes into the meeting. And I, we are talking about last meeting. <laughs> this is inappropriate. Kevin? I need to, uh, Kevin Burke, I'd like to make a comment before you take any further action. And I um, respectfully object to cutting off or curtailing discussion. Uh, but I, I'm asking the chair, just I want to make a comment on the agenda. Can, can, can that wait, Kevin? Because um, I've already explained to you that I've been told that my agendas are correct and appropriate. And you want to discuss them because you're not happy with them, but they're as they should be. This isn't because I'm saying it. No, I, I, I disagree, Larry. And I'm just, it's been suggested earlier that the September 22 agenda clearly said or indicated there would be a vote on preliminary applications. And if you look no, at the agenda, it, it says vote in bold letters on CPC chair, vote on CPC vice chair. And then it says discussion of preliminary applications for FY22 funding cycle. It says nothing about taking a vote or screening or vetting. I I've said my piece. I just want to. I just want to say I. I don't think it was clear, and that's my only point. Okay. So I never, can I say I, something? No, I'm going to speak. I'm okay. Go ahead, Kirsten. No one said that there was a vote. There was discussion extensively <laughs> in the last meeting. Now. The issue with the vote is, from what I understand, we don't even need to vote with regards to what can move forward for preliminary applications. It is under Larry's purview. So this discussion of whether a vote had to be in the agenda is not even necessary. That, that seems to be the crux of it. And I also never, Kevin, I never represented that I said we were gonna put it to a vote in the agenda because I wanted to arrive at consensus. I'm happy to send you the recording of that meeting if you'd like to listen. But I, I do think it's time to move on to the vote. So I'm just gonna go across the screen. There are seven of us here, so you know what a majority is. Uh, Larry, aye. Charlie? Aye. Bob? Aye. Kirsten? Aye. Megan? I'm going to abstain. Kevin? Respectfully, I don't think I can vote because I didn't attend the last meeting. So I neither affirm nor object. Okay, and Vicki? Aye. Okay, so we have five ayes, uh, one abstain, and um, I forgot the other. Uh, I, 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 I don't think I'm eligible. eligible to vote on it because I wasn't in attendance at the last meeting. You are legally allowed to vote, but I agree with you that it kind of doesn't mesh with, I, I agree with your assessment, but I need to inform you that legally you are allowed to take a vote. So it's your decision, Kevin. Uh, I, I, respectfully, I, I'm not sure I agree because I didn't <laughs> listen to the minutes of the last meeting. So I'm, I'm respectfully, uh, I'm not gonna vote one way or another because I don't, I personally don't think Absolutely. I'm eligible. Okay, so we have five eyes, uh, one who is, um, and two abstentions. So, so the motion passes. Thank you all for that discussion and for your opinions. And I think it's time to move on to the final applications. And I'm just going to go in the same order that the preliminary applications were in, leading out the ones that we're not gonna be discussing. And I think the best thing is, um, I'll name the thing and then each liaison should talk about what they found and what they learned and what they think. And then we talk about it and we'll come up at the end with the ones that we agree as a group should go forward. And you know what, if we decide we should take a vote to seal the deal, we can take a vote. We don't have to, let's talk about that later. So the first one is the Sons of Italy Lodge renovation and restoration, and they have opted not to come forward. Um, Judy wrote to me, I think it was about last week, and just said they've decided not to come forward with a final application this year. And she and I didn't get to discuss why. So that's it on that one. 
the next up is the Hingham Housing Authority's application uh, for the Scotland Street House to preserve the building envelope. And this is where the rubber really meets the road and we have to make a decision based on the information we have. And I'll lay it out for you and then we should talk about it. So no community housing can take CPC funds for maintenance, but community housing that was purchased with CPC funds as Scotland Street was, can take um, CPC funds for preservation. So what we have to decide is, and I, and I went with James Marathas to see the house and it's not the siding, it's not the clapboards, it's the trim. It, a lot of it is missing. It, it doesn't look good. It, um, th there's missing trim, you know, like on the side of the house kind of thing. So what we have to decide is would be, would um, replacing that trim and doing the other envelope work, would that be considered maintenance or would it be considered preservation, meaning um, I can put this down from the CP Act, from the actual state law, to protect the property from injury, harm, or destruction. So the question is, so just to make things more complicated, this envelope has kind of been in the state of disrepair for about six years, at least, because um, CPC has been come to for this in the past, and it was rejected and I never could get a clear answer why it was rejected, even though I spoke to the person who was the chair of CPC at the time. But what we need to ask ourselves is, are we protecting the property from injury, harm or destruction? Or is this deferred maintenance that finally needs to be um, addressed or that is eligible to be addressed? I wanna make the point that whatever we decide is eligible to go forward, doesn't mean that we're gonna vote money in favor of it comes January. This is just about eligibility, not the worthiness of the project, not how you, whether you feel good or bad about the project, just has the bar been met? So I would like to open it out to the floor of CPC and get some opinions about whether this is maintenance or preservation. Larry, I, I'd like to speak first. First of all, I, I don't think we should drill down on each project like this. This is up for a committee. Um, I mean, this is a, we've just agreed that this is a final application. I believe this should go forward. And I mean, none of us can make even have this conversation. We haven't seen it. So quite honestly, I think it should go through final application. And I don't know why we would have this conversation tonight until we've seen it. I believe these should go forward. I mean, I don't know why we're talking about it. <laughs> That's the whole purpose of CPC. This may be eligible, but we'll only know when all of us have seen it. That's my That's, feeling. That's a reasonable comment. We do have to go through each application because it's our mandate to decide which final applications are complete and meet all the requirements to be CPC eligible. So- and I would I would say this should go to final, we should move forward on this. Others, Kristen. So, my issue is with, and I, I am split down the middle. So, I agree with Vicky, but at the same time, I we have seen it. Like we've we've looked at the property before. We've seen we saw the deterioration of all of this. The last application that was put in when we went, and we met with them, and we talked to the uh, Lisi about how he was redoing the windows and, and other things. So my, my question is, I, I, if, if it's been like this, has in the application, have they said anything has been done to this building in the interim or it is just sat exactly the way it is during that time? Okay. You're giving me the pop quiz. I think they have replaced the siding, you know, the thing that we would call clabbered. We but saw I, pieces of the, the, for lack of landscape piece knowledge. Yeah. The large pediment across the top that had fallen down in chunks that the lessee, um, I forget the lovely man's name, 
had pulled aside to try to save when it had fallen off the building and put it in his back garage. Like, has anything been done with any of that by the town in the interim, or have they just let more of it crumble? Well, the town wouldn't do anything. It would have to be the housing authority. Um, so, I'm thinking Mary, of this is this is Vicki again. I don't mean to speak over to over you, but I think it's important. So I have a document here when in 2015 the housing authority was given, and I have it here. Um, the total estimate was 31,000. We gave them 28,068 dollars, and I have the uh, exactly what they were supposed to do at that time. So my point is, without going to see, did they do that in 2015? Um, or did they not? I mean, so they got 28,000, they spent it on something and I'd certainly want um, to see what that was spent on. But we have a list right here of what it was supposed to be spent on. So um, to me, these things are really important because it's not as if this is first time and, and Kristen, Kristen has a really good point. Um, where is the wear and tear from? How long ago was it replaced? Is this new? And what was what was taken care of when we, when we uh, did give them funds from CPA previously? Well, I just want to add, I forgot. It's also a window, a bay window at the back of the house. I assume it's the kitchen, but I don't know. So it's that trim in the window. So I hear you, Vicki. Right, yeah. Does anybody else on the committee want to speak to this? I'm kind of thinking we need to let somebody from HHA speak about uh, what has been done since they first came forward with the envelope, even if we decide to move forward and go see it as a group. Um, I'm assuming Rick is that person. But, um, Megan Demore, can you open up Rick Broussard and see if he's the one who's going to speak to uh, what has been done since they first came forward with this ask about six years ago? Do you see him on the list? Yep, of course. I asked to un unmute, so he should be able to. Okay. Can everybody hear me? Yep. Well, Larry, we sent you cost reports of what was spent. Did you not share those with the committee and the advisory? I, I got cost reports from you, and I got give outs from... Um, what are give outs? I, I, I'm, I'm trying to talk, Rick. So oh, I got oh, cost reports. I got cost reports from you and I got from the town what they gave out to the Hingham Housing Authority for these purposes. And I'm not sure that the two things exactly line up. So I've held on to it because I wanted to understand it better. Um, but, I, but can you respond to Megan's, uh, not Megan, to Kirsten's question about, for instance, that pediment yes. in front of the house? Um, I don't know about the impediment. I, this is the first I'm hearing of that. No, not, the, not impediment. It's like a triangular thing above the front door. It's a piece of trim. Uh, the, uh, the rake boards on the portico? Um, is it? I'd have to take a look at the elevation again um, okay. of, of the building, but I'm, I'm not, I can't speak specifically to that. But okay. what I can tell you is on those cost reports, um, I don't think I'd be talking right now if, if the committee had, had, if you had shared those because it's clearly spelled out what was done in there. But the the water table, um, and what a water table is, it's the um, horizontal piece of trim at the bottom of a house um, where the siding, the first course of siding starts. That was done, and that is still, as far as I know, it's in fairly good shape. The siding was done. Um, there was money given for the boiler, but it was never done. Um, I don't, I don't, actually, there wasn't money given by the, by the CPC. Um, I think, Vicki, you had mentioned that there was an, um, an initial award for that, but I, apparently um, the director at the time said that they were, I'm sorry, I'm jumping off onto the boiler subject. Yeah, if you could hold on the boiler, because we're going to. Okay, I'll hold, I'll hold on it, Larry. Um, so back to the, back to the siding. None of the rake boards are do were done. None of the fascia boards were done. Um, and so that's primarily um, what I laid out in those applications. Um, so the siding is, you know, that's, it, I believe it was cedar shakes, cedar shingles. So, you know, bugs don't like cedar. So that, that should be pretty good. Um, 
you know, I, I think that's why we went with cedar. You either go with okay. cedar or vinyl because it's you. minimal I'm, maintenance. Okay, um, I'm gonna, don't mute yourself, just stay right there. So um, I, I should have shared with the committee what Rick said was done and I should have shared with the committee what the monies that Sue Nickerson said we gave out. That would have been helpful. Um, but I don't know if it would have solved the problem, but it would have added more information into the mix. I don't, I don't know. So Vicki is saying we should let this one go forward. I'm not sure what Kirsten is saying, what, what you're advising Kirsten. Can you unmute? Sorry. Yeah. You're, oh, um, you're eating. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my, my question is really bigger. I, I think that we, we need to make a decision with regards to, are we going through all these applications right now in nitpicking, in determining eligibility, which, or are we just finding out information and passing them through? Because we're, I think we have to hold all applications to the same yeah. standard. We're, we're determining, um, we're, we're not discussing worthiness of applications or what they're, we're discussing eligibility. Have they met the bar? Is it considered a complete application by CPC standards? Has it, and has it met the bar? Is this preservation and not um, maintenance? And I, I was kind of, I don't know. I, I, I'm gonna just bring it back to the committee. Um, okay. So does anybody else on the committee have any thoughts on this? And I don't know what to think. Yeah. I don't feel like I have enough information. Okay. I'm kind we need of to see the property. We need to go to the property. I okay. have I believe that this should go through. We need to see the property. Okay. So I'm kind of thinking that way too. It, I, I don't even think seeing the property will answer the question of whether it's maintenance or well, we'll know what they're talking about. We can't we'll know what they're talking about. And I'll get you the stuff that Rick sent to me before the site visit. We we certainly can't do any harm by letting it go forward but we could potentially make a mistake by not letting it go forward. Does that sound reasonable? Yes. Okay. And by the way, Kirsten, the, after HHA, they're not thorny. They, they should go pretty fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So the next one is the Hingham Housing Authority Fax to Park, Park Fire Door Hold Open System. And I went to see this one too. Um, so, just so you know, they don't want to replace the fire doors. They want to set up an electronic system whereby the, the fire doors remain open, but then when the um, fire alarm goes off, the doors close. I really looked at it. I really studied it. You come in the front door of the building and then there's a little vestibule and then there's this fire door. And one of the arguments uh, made to us up front was, it's very heavy and difficult for elderly people and disabled people to open the fire doors. Um, so I want to tell you, I'm, I'm 63 and a half. I'm a year and a half from being an elderly person. And those of you who know me in person know I'm very slight and I had absolutely no issue opening the fire doors. When I got to see the fire doors, I went with James Marathas and also a workman. I don't know if he was a superintendent, but I never, I wasn't told his name or introduced to him. And he said, the reason the tenants want the fire doors open is it's a ventilation issue. And that's why they like them open all the time. And my, what I wanna share with you is they have fire doors. They're not replacing the fire doors. And if the tenants keep them closed, um, the building is protected in case of a fire and it's free. It doesn't cost thirty-eight thousand dollars. I, I just, I, I'm telling you the truth. I went with my best foot forward to see what, what's the deal here. They're doors. They're not the lightest doors in the world, but they're not onerous. And tenants have to take those little wedges out and close the door when they're not. You just open it to walk through. I grew up in an apartment building. It was the same situation: outer door, vestibule, inner door. We had to keep the inner door closed. We weren't allowed to prop it open. I, I feel very confident telling you that I don't see that as eligible. 
but I want to open it out to the committee. I just have one question. Was this the situation where you said to James that the people you were seeing didn't look disabled and so therefore they probably weren't? I said the people I was seeing looked fine. They looked healthy. Yes, I said they didn't look disabled and he said they okay. were disabled. I'd love this to be in the minutes. Can we put that in the minutes, please? I would love, Thank you. To, I would love for you to not be snarky and to- Oh, and I'm to, not being snarky here. Well, yeah. I think some people in the room would beg to differ from you. So what I'm saying is the doors are not, you don't have to be Herculean to open the doors. They're fire doors, they're there. And if they're closed when people are not walking through them, they're, they protect the building in case of a fire. But I think others on my, so now Megan and I have spoken, I think others should well, speak. Can, now I'm gonna let, let others on the committee speak now. Okay, and then can we let James speak? Well, I'll see. So. Others on my committee. Well, by law, fire doors should remain closed. If we get over that hurdle, um, sorry, but that's why they're fire doors. And if they're left open uh, and a fire starts, of course, you've created a draft. There's a whole bunch of uh, life safety code issues involved in this conversation. And uh, from the fire door standpoint, if they're propped open, uh, they aren't doing their jobs and that may become an insurance company issue as well as anything else. I just wanna make that observation. I'm not making a judgment, <laughs> nor am I voting on this. And I stand here as the, uh, probably the oldest person on this committee in my eighties. So I am just saying that this is an observation that we should take into consideration. Other, Kirsten, you need to unmute. I am. Um, one, let's remember that we are all human and let's be civil, okay? Second, um, it clearly says appropriate for CPA funding, installation of higher hardwired smoke alarm sprinklers and other building fire suppression systems. So I think that this should move forward because it, regardless of whether there's a system there or not, is not debated within the CPA funding. So everyone is allowed to update everything as it goes along, as better systems come along. So whether this is something that we want to fund when there is a system in place, I think is an issue we can look at down the road. But I think this does qualify to move forward. Okay, others? Nobody, Vicki, Kevin. I have no comment other than to say, Larry, that both you and I qualify as elderly according to AARP and others. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't think that's what it means to <laughs> public housing. Um, I, I, I'm happy for it to go forward. I'm, I'm okay with it not going forward. I, I think we need kind of more of the committee to speak up. I, I, I am Charlie, own, yeah. I'm fine with it. I, I agree with Kristen and I'm I'm fine with, with having it move forward. Okay. Vicki? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm fine with it going forward. I think that uh, again, it's something that we need to look at. Um, and it, it is a you know it, it's certainly something that's important for uh, safety. So without seeing it, I don't like to make a judgment because clearly it could be CPC funded, but we have a lot of projects this year. So uh, I believe it should go forward. Okay, then we'll go forward. And then the last one on the housing authority is the, um, the boiler, the heating system replacement. And this is Vicki. So I wanna just speak quickly because Rick said something and no, Rick, I did not say that, um, that you had done your bowl boiler. I said that uh, back in 2015, um, and this isn't you, but the housing uh, authority did give us your five-year plan. And what was in your five-year plan was that you were going to be replacing the system in 26, 2015 to 2016. So um, you had requested money for it before, um, but didn't get, but it, was part of another thing. So we didn't give you money for the system. My question is, if you were going to do it in 2015, 2016, 
how are you even, man how is it, was it done? Was it repaired? Or how is it even hanging on in 2021? So I'm sorry if, if you understood me to say something different at the last meeting. So I, that's a good segue into the heating system replacement. Right. So, um, I'm actually confused about the boiler because when James and I were at the house and because we were told the system had failed, which in my mind means it can't work. So I, this was, and I met with James in October and I said, so where is the family gonna be moved to this winter? Because even if you get this money, it wouldn't be available till July 1st of 2022. And he said, well, I don't know, we're looking into that now. And I said, and I have to admit, I was kind of surprised because it's October and they can't, even if we voted the money, they can't get it. And then he said, or it'll have to come out of operations funds. And so none of that makes it eligible or not eligible, but I, I go back to the question of, is it, maintenance or is it preservation? In my head, my head goes to maintenance because it's something they've been wanting to replace for at least six years. Houses need a boiler replaced every once in a while. And that's not, you know, so it, it could have been replaced at any time if it was thought to be, oh, this is gonna go on us. But again, I'm happy to open it out to the committee um, I'm, and if the committee decides we should go see it, I'm happy to go see it. I wouldn't have a clue what I was looking at, but um, but let, let's hear from others. Anybody on my committee? Guys, we have to make a determination of whether this is an eligible final application. I guess the only thing- Charlie. That, okay, go ahead, sorry. Uh, Charlie, sorry, sorry, Vicky. I, I think this is this is maintenance, and and under, I mean, under that sort of that view, I would not support it going forward. Others, Vicky. Well, I was just going to say they uh, original. I the final application that came in at almost eighteen thousand. I just don't understand what kind of heating system costs. But, 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 but I understand not, that that's different. Maintenance. I yeah, I yeah. think this definitely goes under maintenance. And um, I, I don't, so maintenance. Kirsten? Replacing of a boiler is, it to me is maintenance. Like it's not, it's not replacing, so, it's not a threat. It's not dangerous to a building. Like it's, it's something it's required to heat it. It's maintenance to me. Okay, I'm seeing it the way you are. Uh, Bob, do you wanna say something about this? Well, uh, boilers require maintenance to operate efficiently. I don't know whether this boiler has been well-maintained or not, um, but it's definitely maintenance. It's not preservation or anything else. And Kevin, do you wanna to speak to it? Um, I. I don't have any particular comment other than what has already been said. Okay, so I, I have to tell you, we're, we're decidedly in favor of calling this maintenance, but I kind of feel it, it would be wrong not to let Rick, Rick speak to this before we walk away from it because he may shed light that none of us are realizing. So Megan Demore, if you can unmute him. You should be able to. There he goes. Okay, Rick. And I called you Broussard. I'm sorry, it's Brouillard. Brouillard, correct. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I kind of first want to say it's it's uh, it's a little bit disconcerting that we have to be um, treated like children, that we can't, you know, we have to be unmuted, that we can't, you know, I understand that you're concerned you don't, you want to keep the meeting in, or, in order, but I, I'm just, it's a little disconcerting. But um, so let me start, Vicki, I just want to start, um, with you, um, the reason I thought that was because if um, you go on the coalition's database, it, there actually is a record in there for um, the Scotland Road boiler. But then there's a note that that says that um, I'm paraphrasing here, but it says that it wasn't it was done by the authority or the or the award didn't go through or something like that. 
So that's why I brought it up. Um, okay. Secondly, um, both to Charles and Vicki, um, you didn't say, you just said it's maintenance, but you didn't say why you thought it was maintenance, okay? That, uh, and then, um, Kirsten, you went a little bit into that. Um, and then I'll, I'll address the whole thing. Previously in the preliminary application, both in the documentation and in the meeting, we talked about the heat exchanger on that unit and there's photos of that. It's cracked. So it is now a dangerous building system. Um, also, that had been maintained. It's, it's, it was installed in 2000, December of 2000. It's right on the sticker in the photo. So it has been maintained since then. The trouble is it probably, I'm guessing, and I don't know this for a fact, because I haven't seen records. They're probably in boxes in the basement of Hingham. Um, but the state does not give an operating subsidy. They, they're funded at about 60% of the true cost of operating public housing. So they don't have money. They've got one guy. That's it. He does everything. So from a maintenance standpoint, it, it, we maintain things, yes. Um, it has been maintained. It, it is now endangering the building because that boiler, as you know, Henry, um, you've got some engineering experience there. That building, that boiler could blow. Um, that heat exchanger is cracked. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're hoping for this money. Historically, we haven't gotten a lot of money through, through CPC. And if we do it, it'll be, you know, I, uh, Vicki, I think, I know we're not talking pricing, but I think one of the reasons for that is there's a, just a lot of big work going on and that you can't find contractors. It's hard. So I'll, I'll just li leave it at that. Um, so I guess that's about it. It, 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 is, um, it is a dangerous building system under DHCD's um, you know, public housing notice that they released. And that was you know, one of their um, supports um, or advocacies, if you will. Um, so thank you very much. Okay. Um, so Rick, I think what the committee was saying, not that it was maintained or wasn't maintained, but that replacing a boiler every so often is maintenance. Maintenance, like it was installed in, in 2000, 20 it's years not. later. It's not. Excuse me, I'm talking. Um, Sorry about that. So every house needs a boiler every so often and 20 years sounds like a, like about the amount of time. So I think that's where the committee was coming from, but I also don't want to put words in the committee's mouth. So um, I would actually like to hear back from Vicki and Charlie and Kirsten and Bob, whether they, their minds are changed or they stick to maintenance because we kind of need to know that. This is Charlie. Um, I, I continue, thank you, Rick, for the explanation. Um, I continue, I, I view this replacement of the boiler as a maintenance issue and, uh, and therefore I, I vote that it does not go forward. Um, Kirsten? Hey. Kirsten? Um, I'll defer to Megan first. Okay. Oh, Megan. I was just wondering if, if James could speak. If on James Marathas could speak. On top of Rick? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Can you unmute James Marathas, Megan, to more? Hi, this is James Marathas, Executive Director for the Hingham Housing Authority. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so first of all, the, the dispute of, uh, well, first of all, I, I want to first say that I, I am extremely, extremely concerned that you continue to make reference to statements of conversations that you had with me when I was present and you are misleading people on the content of that conversation and not allowing me to speak to correct the issues that you have falsely represented to the board. Number one, when you were on the site and you identified an elderly woman as not being so elderly that she would have a problem to open the door, I find that beyond unconscionable that you could identify a person and state whether or not she was able to open a door or not and what your comment was, was that she seemed to be okay. The fact that you have so little respect for the 120 disabled elderly people that live at the Hingham Housing Authority absolutely outrages me. Secondly, when you're talking about a boiler replacement, maintenance on a boiler is changing filters. Maintenance on a boiler 
is changing a water feed or changing a component of a heating system. When you replace a heating system, that is a capital improvement classified by the Massachusetts Department of Housing and Community Development as a capital need for a property to protect the welfare of the people that live in that building. Replacing a boiler has nothing to do with maintenance. It does not fall under maintenance. It is a capital improvement to preserve the structure of the people that live in there for safe, decent, and sanitary housing. There is so many misrepresentations that have happened in this meeting. I spoke to Tom Mayo myself, and what he told me was that it was illegal for you to arbitrarily take out applications and claim that those applications were not eligible to go forward. In fact, you were supposed to present each application to all of the board members and each board member was to vote on each application on whether it was able to go forward or not. That did not happen. That is a violation of open meeting law. And what has been represented to the rest of the board is not the conversation that I had with Mr. Mayo. Thank you, James, for your comments. So I'm going to You're respond. Welcome. I'm going to respond to that. Um, the committee has never, in the past, voted on whether each application was eligible. They always just discussed it, arrived at a, a preliminary application or a final, for that matter. They discussed it, they arrived at a decision, and they moved on. So I don't know why Tom said it was illegal not to vote on each one, but um, I see it differently and I have a feeling, I'm not a lawyer, but certainly president, precedent wouldn't <laughs> suggest that we did it illegally. But um, back to the boiler. Um, so it's up to our committee again, and this will be the final, we've heard from um, two people from the housing authority. We still, now that you've heard from them and they've had their opportunity to say why they feel it's not maintenance, to replace a boiler. Again, we need to say whether we think it is maintenance and should and or not. So um, Vicki, why don't you go first? Well, uh, you know, I don't wanna get into who said who's, I have a document here that came from the Hingham Housing Authority that said they were gonna replace their 20 year old boiler in 2015. Okay, so um, I can only go by what Hingham Housing Authority has given to me. Um, whether we're talking maintenance or not, my boiler's 35 years old. So I'm con totally confused uh, if maintenance is something that if the boiler has a problem and can be fixed, it's maintenance. If we're talking a replacement of the entire boiler, fine. But it seems to me there is a discrepancy as to how old this boiler is. So I have a real issue with that. So are you changing your opinion, Vicki? Because at first you said it was maintenance, but now- well, that, it, To me, it is maintenance because I have a document that says it isn't. Okay, me. so it's, just to- That's it, maintenance. maintenance. Kirsten? Furthermore, um, it was just represented that the replacement of the boiler is a capital improvement um, by the rep for the building. Am I, was that accurate? Yeah. Well, that's what I thought I heard. So- specifically under the CPA rules. So rehabilitation is defined in section two of the CPA as quote, capital improvements or the making of extraordinary repairs to make a commu skip, community functional for their intended uses is not allowed with our funds. So one, I think it's maintenance in two, if it is what he just said it is, which he's now saying it's a capital improvement, that's not allowed either. Okay, Charlie. Charlie, um, I, I, I'm here. I'm here. No, I, I continue to 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 um, and not change my mind. I still okay. believe it. I haven't changed it. mine either. Um, Bob, uh, I need to ask Rick. I need to ask Rick a question. <sighs> Um, can you unmute Rick Megan Demore? Yeah, go ahead, Henry. So the question I have is, uh, uh, and so it depends on how the boiler is built. Since I haven't seen this boiler, I have no idea the size. In some boilers, you can replace the heat exchange unit separately.
from the bulk of the from the fire box and the and the uh, uh, blower and so forth. So I I have no uh, concept of what kind of boiler it is and whether the you could spend money reasonably to just replace the heat exchanging units, which is what you said was cracked. Okay. Do you um, want to? Oh, sorry, Rick. Go on. Okay. Thanks. Did any of the committee see the photos of those that we submitted? We have in the no, Larry did not send on your emails to us. Oh, well, that explains a lot. Excuse me, excuse me. You have all of the final applications, including that one. Oh, okay. Um, well, it was you can actually see it's hard to see because it's a 20 year old boiler. The sticker had some it looked like um something on it but it was 123,000 doe henry uh yeah. btu doe yeah. Um, yeah and it was 12 2000 right up at the top you can clearly see that on the on the photo of the of the label and well, i believe uh, it, i can't, couldn't tell it i think it's a burnham okay so it's your it's your run of the mill you know um, right i I've got, I'm, what I, I have the final application here and I may have missed some things because I've been traveling, but I don't see any pictures in the final application. The, the, is that, is, am I missing something, Larry, that was in the application? I, no, I mean, I sent you the final. I thought that right, but I don't, my, right. my problem is I don't see any pictures in it that Rick's talking about, that's all. I think at this point, so this no is, pictures were submitted with the final application. Were or were not? Not. Okay. So this okay, is really so right. I'm not missing anything. No. Maybe I'm referring to I I know I had sent some pictures along, but I, I could be, you know, I could be wrong. Okay. So I'd like to just Megan Demore, I'd like to go back to the committee. This is what I'm hearing that Vicky, Kirsten, Charlie, and I feel it's maintenance. Kevin is um, not gonna weigh in. I'm not sure how Megan feels, and Bob, I don't know where you end up. Uh, well, um, I don't end up Larry. anywhere. Be oh, sorry. No, that's okay, okay, Bob. You're talking. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, I don't end up anywhere until I can see the pictures because uh, if it's just replacing a firebox, that's maintenance. Okay, I don't know where we are with that. I'd have to see the system. And so Kevin, I'm not, you... I am not intellectually capable at this point of visualizing what needs to be actually needs to be done here. And Kevin, were you going to say something? Yes, I, I was going to say my sense is that it's either a capital improvement or maintenance. Um, uh, but I suppose, uh, you know, we could defer on a final decision, but my sense is, uh, it's capital improvement or maintenance. And uh, based on Kirsten's reading, uh, apparently it would not be eligible under either circumstance. Okay. I would agree with that, but I still don't know what we're talking about, that's all. So four people are clear that they don't think this is eligible. I don't wanna misrepresent our committee. Am I correct that a majority of the committee says this one should not go forward? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the, the two HHAs that are going to go forward are the Scotland Street envelope and the fire doors. Now we're going to move on to the next one, which is um, the Hingham Historical Commission. We had said that the $20,000 toward restoration of the tree and park barn ball painting was not eligible. That 20K <laughs> was eligible. So Vicki, you were the liaison. Do you want to report on that? Uh, well, I never heard from Andrea, but she didn't submit a final application. So as far as I know, um, I reached out to her to talk to her about it, did not hear back, but um, we didn't receive a final application. So I'm assuming she's not moving forward because it was not in by the 12th. Right. Okay. So that one's out. The next up is the Hingham Sports Partnership, the Hingham High School Health and Wellness Center. Megan, do you want to report? your discussions with them and yeah it sounds like a really nice prog project uh i feel like they've they've been putting it together pretty quickly but also very well like it seems very well thought out uh 
I believe they they seem to have all their ducks in a row, um, and it certainly seems to fall under recreation to me. Others? Vicki? I guess Sorry. my only question um, is the $80,000 for um, a feasibility study. Um, I'm familiar with the building. I'm totally um, not understanding what the basis of that is, but uh, that doesn't mean I don't think it should go forward. I think we need to hear from them. I would assume that they have quotes and that they have um, documentation for what that's all about. So that that's my only statement. So, but uh, absolutely, I think it's eligible and should go forward. Anybody else? I agree with Vicki on that. I don't understand the 80 grand for a feasibility study. I disagree with um, all of you. I think this is not a complete application. The, the final application specifically states that you have to have a detailed cost estimate. CPC has approved a number of feasibility studies over the years and detailed cost estimates always come in and they talk about how much for this and how much for that. And we dill drilled down deep. When the Recreation Commission came to us to study the high school fields and they came in with a number, we grilled Mark Thorell, the Recreation Commission director. Well, how do you, I think it was 55,000. How do you arrive at this number? How much are people getting paid an hour? What's, what's what? So I, I see this as an incomplete application. The other reason I feel it's incomplete is they came to us in a preliminary with a preliminary application saying they wanted money to convert the building. And then they switched gears and came back and said, we want a feasibility study. You can't come with a final that's a different project. You can change the scope of the project from preliminary to final, but this is different. And, then, and I disagree with you all, we, they should have come in Firms do feasibility studies, and our application says we really re prefer three, and they had none. And the way the application read was, based on other projects, we think eighty is right. I, I don't. I think that we're not holding them to the same standards as any other application. If we let this go forward, I feel strongly about it. So let me ask a technical question from the standpoint of this, the purpose of this particular meeting, is it to go back and advise them that we do not believe that their application is sufficiently complete? And here is what we would like to see. I don't know what the process is. So the is process here. is October 12th was the deadline. If the application wasn't complete by then, it's an invalid application. This is not like, this is a good start, you're in, we, we're gonna look for more details as we go along. Like with the housing authority, people are saying, I wanna see more, I wanna see it with my own eyes, I wanna understand it. That hang, the Hingham High School thing, you can't just say we want 80. You can't slap a number on it and say, we think that's a reasonable number. You need a cost estimate from an outside vendor. It's just not there. I, I thought, this one was like not vexing to me. And I don't, uh, Larry, this is Vicki. I mean, I hadn't uh, brought this forward before, but since Kirsten might have the document in front of her, I know that um, certain um, recreational facilities, enclosed facilities are not eligible. And I don't know if you have that in front of you, Kirsten. So, you know, I don't know if they're trying to get around that, uh, that issue. I mean, for example, gyms are not, um, uh, eligible outdoor facilities for what, I mean, whatever reason, I'm not here to discuss why CPC is why it is, but there are certain eligibilities. So if we were to try to, if they were to try to come forward uh, for this enclosed facility, I'm not sure it would even be CPC eligible. So is a fee feasibility study for that um, project eligible? I'm not quite sure. And Kirsten, I don't know if you were looking at something particular, but I know an enclosed, the recreational facility is not eligible. 
it's definitely not. In, in fact, right. I just had that talk with Stuart last week, but I, I, I know I, that because we've looked at plenty of them. I hadn't even been thinking of that. I'm just thinking right. it's an incomplete mm. application. You can't, so, I mean, they literally said we wouldn't put a number to it. We're not far enough along. We weren't asking for a number for the cost of the building. You need, well, I'm just repeating. I, I, guys, it's not eligible. Even if you say it is, I feel strongly. Do we have a representative here with us is, for that is project? Ray, is Ray here or um, Mr. Quilty? I forgot your last name, your first name, or either Ray Estes or Mr. Quilty here. It doesn't Maybe. appear. I thought Kevin was going to be here tonight, but I don't see him. So my question is, who is supposed to, so they submitted the project and the initial concern with this was that we did not, they didn't proceed with proper authority to even do anything with the property. But they got it before the 12th. Right. So is the school committee the proper and only authority that is needed in order to do anything with the property? Yes, I confirmed that with the select board. Okay. So I, I have concerns with regards to, I don't know if we can, one, they did change the project, um, as you say, Larry, and Second, I don't know if we can do a feasibility study for a basically a gym is what they're asking for. Right, which is ineligible CPC funding. So that's what I don't know if we can do a feasibility study for a gym. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is they can actually research that and if they feel very strongly about this, they should come back next year with an ask for a feasibility study that has at least one detailed cost estimate from a company that does feasibility studies. Why would we give them this pass? I agree. We grilled the uh, waterfront last year with regards to not having sufficient numbers in what a feasibility study would cost. And look at the pool. I mean, the pool really had to scramble. We, we said we're not going forward unless you have a cost estimate by the 12th. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, I just don't see how it's a level playing field. I concur. Charlie? I do agree. I agree. I mean, that was, that was a correct, I agree with Kristen. I agree with you that about regarding the cost estimate. And that was consistent with our, our last conversation regarding the pool. We, we required the cost estimate to be included in the application. So I think to vote otherwise. Yeah, I mean, I agree because I don't, you, you, it, it's ineligible in the fact that it's a gym, which is not CPC fundable. And Bob? I agree, uh, given the language that I've heard that it, it is not eligible. Me Megan? I, I, I'm torn. I do kind of agree that, that if it is eligible, they're not quite ready. And I think that they also kind of realize that. I think the, I think they have really great ideas. Um, but I think that they, it's bigger. It turned out bigger than they thought it would be. I think they were like, yes, let's do this. And then once they actually sat down and started planning, it turned much bigger, which is why the scope changed from the project to the feasibility study. So I actually, I don't really, I, I'm not really ready to weigh in about whether it's eligible not or not, although it sounds like it's not. My main issue is really just that I'm not sure they're ready. And I think that another year of them sort of coming up with exactly what they want could make a really great project. Okay, Kevin? Um, my sense is that uh, it's not ready from a process standpoint. I don't know if now is the time to tell them it's not ready in the past. That's when we have voted, you know, when we're making our monetary votes on everything is when we've said we don't think this thing is ready to go forward. Um, and I don't feel like, you know, I know whether we can um, give funds to a study for what may be an ineligible ultimate project. You know, I, I don't know from a process standpoint. Uh, you know, overall, I'm, I'm not comfortable with 
this project at this time. Okay, so I'm, I'm hearing that there is a clear majority that has now feels that's not eligible. I think, and I, I, I think Kevin makes a good fine point. It, it's, it's hard to determine whether it's not, it doesn't seem like they're in third gear yet, but that's separate from, is it eligible? I think it's not eligible because they haven't met the bar that all the other projects have been required to meet. And yeah, that's a good point. They need to find out whether it's eligible at all, but I think just cleanly, without a detailed cost estimate, they, ha they have an incomplete application. So I'm, I, I, I know I talk a lot, so am I correct that we're not letting this one go forward? Yes. Others? Yes. Okay. Okay, so that one's not in for this year. So then we're at the Hingham Affordable Housing Trust and we don't have a liaison for that, although I'm gonna be assigning one. I don't know if Amy is here. Um, so I'll just say I saw no problem with that one going forward. But does anybody else want to address it? No problem. Does anybody have a problem? No. Okay, so that one. Charlie? No, no, no issue. Okay. Um, then we have Habitat for Humanity building the two homes on Whiting Street. Bob, do you want to kick that off? Well, I visited the site. I've met with the proponents and um, we've had subsequent email correspondence back and forth. Um, they wanted to know how much detail to put in. Um, my advice was to put in the, the fundamental foundational materials on costs, et cetera. And if uh, we wanted to look at the actual bids, they would provide them to us. And actually, I think they did a very, very good job in their presentation. And this application is definitely complete. So uh, I'm in favor of moving this one forward. OK. Uh, is, uh, others, do they want to speak? I to agree. Uh, this project has been in front of CPC um, several times before. And I'm thrilled that Habitat for Humanity is now on board and moving forward. So. Uh, yeah, I think it's a, a absolutely project that should move forward. Megan? Um, yeah, I agree. It seems like a, a solid project and I'd like to learn more. Any, anybody who doesn't feel that one should move forward. Okay, so that one's on. Then we're up to, oh, this is a complicated one. The Hingham Girl Scouts. Let me, I know Kevin's the liaison, but let me kick this one off because, um, so Peg Doyle, who's, I forget her title. She's the mucky muck at the Hingham Girl Scouts. She sent in a final application to the, me at the CPC email on the 13th. And she said that, I, I know this is a day late, but can you accept this application? I sent Kevin the application. And Kevin, this, none of this is to impugn you. I'm just trying to cr create the timeline. I sent Kevin the application on the 4th and I asked him to get back to me on the 8th and here it is and, I, and it was the 13th. And I said to her, please send me exactly what you sent Kevin. Don't add anything. Don't put a note at the top. Just forward me exactly what you sent him. So she did. And that's what I sent on to you guys and that's what, when it was a day late. And in my head, I was kind of thinking, Gee, if she sent Kevin the complete application, I mean, maybe we could make a case that by sending it to him, she sent it to CPC, even though it didn't go to the CPC address. And then I opened, and, and before I opened it, she and I spoke and she said, Kevin said he would get back to me by the 8th. And I said, no, he didn't, because I saw her exchange in a different email, I saw her exchange exchange between him and her and he's she said yes he did and I said no I, I you sent me the email that says I'll take a look which is not I'll get back to you by the 8th so we had that talk and I said Peg let me just send this on to the committee I 
I, I think it, and then she said, the final application I sent you on the 13th is a little bit different from what I sent Kevin. Not much, but just, just a little bit, just a couple of points. I said, I absolutely can't send them the one on the 13th. That's positively late, but I'm, let me send them the other one and we can talk about it. And then I went to open the application she sent to Kevin and it's not a complete application as you saw when you opened it. It doesn't have those front pieces. So I've said my piece, now I'm gonna put it out to you guys and you talk about it. Anybody? This, this is Vicki, so I'll start because uh, unfortunately I am very much a black and white kind of person and the rules are the rules. And I also, when I got that from you, I was very disappointed to not see. I mean, it's very clear that there is an application that needs to be filled out. And every one of our applicants fills out what's called final application due date, October 12th, 2021 at 5 p.m. Those pages weren't filled out. Um, I just, you know, I mean, that's just what you have to do when you apply for a grant, when you apply for any kind of funding. Um, and I just feel that the application not only was late, but it wasn't even filled out. And I, I feel badly because I like the Girl Scouts and I worked hard with them several years ago, but I think that um, they need to uh, reapply next year. And I'm sorry to say that, but it was a late application. And it's, to be honest, it still hasn't been, final application has not been filled out. I, by the way, the Hingham Housing Authority went through this last year. They were late with their final and we knocked it out, but others, anybody on our committee? I would simply say that if, if there's any tardiness or uh, error because of my professional schedule and, and miscommunication with me as to whether or not I would be the recipient or I would do anything, I would simply ask the CPC to give the Girl Scouts a pass and let it go on to the next stage because I don't want I don't want anything that I may have done or failed to do to uh, cause an applicant to not go forward. I don't think you so did, I would ask then. I would ask that that you consider letting it go forward based on the application on the 13th. No that one I can't forward to you guys. I mean that that absolutely and also, you didn't do anything to make the Girl Scouts not send in their final on time. But anyway, others on the committee, it, this is hard. Well, let me ask a question. Uh, they did not submit a document, which I will hold up here because, again, I'm a neophyte. But if they did not submit this, then does this constitute an incomplete application? That's what we're saying, because it's, it's the front pieces of the application. And I'm kind of asking the committee what it thinks. Well, we just rejected some. Uh, no, we did. That was for lack of detail. Um, I, if they didn't submit the final application, I, I don't know whether this reflects on Kevin's communications, but there's a document called final application, and uh, it has clearly due date October 12th. Etc. cetera, um, and if it's not with it, then is it a final application? I mean, that's what I'm asking you. Well, I'm just throwing it out there because it would appear to me that it's not a final application if those documents are not with it. So are you saying in your estimation, it is not a final application? I think I just said that. Okay, <laughs> that. okay. I don't want to read into anybody's um, My silence on things, Larry, is the only thing you have to be <laughs> cautious about reading in. Okay. Um, <laughs> Kirsten, can you unmute? You have to unmute. Do I? Yes. I know, it's heartbreaking. Um, I am a Girl Scout. <laughs> so <laughs> We knew. We knew. <laughs> um. I'm a troop leader, so I have a hard time stepping in on this. It's heartbreaking. Um, but I mean, it's it's a rule. It's and it's plainly on 
our information when it is and when it isn't due. I mean, there's some things that are harder and that's why we have liaisons, but I understand where everyone's coming from, but don't make me say it. <laughs> okay, it won't make you say it, but you said it. Charlie, have you spoken to this yet? I don't remember. I haven't, I haven't. And, and I would, um, unfortunately, I, I think that the rules are the rules here. The, the application is late. I understand the circumstances or, or, the, or the, what has been discussed, but I don't think that this committee should, should start making exceptions on changing or accepting applications after the posted deadline, as, as any, harsh as it may be. Does anybody else on our committee want to say anything? Okay, so um, I I want to say this. It'll help a little bit. Um, you can't not love the Girl Scouts. That would just be weird. And um, from everything I've heard about Peg, she's just great and they run a wonderful organization. And I would just say that at least Peg, and I'll give you an opportunity to speak if you want, it, at least it's not an emergency. You know, it's an, it's an aspirational goal. It's, it's good to make things ADA accessible. It's laudable, it's the right thing to do, but it's not like something bad is going to happen if it isn't done right now, like purchasing the Benjamin Lincoln house for the town or something like that. So, so I, it, I, it looks like our answer is no. It, it, our answer is no, but nonetheless, you're, I can only imagine how you feel. And if you want to say something, Megan Demore will unmute you. You should have the opportunity now. Yeah. Yes, hi. Um, Yes, I am disappointed, but I respect your decision. Um, all I can say is go to GoFundMe.com, please. We now have to raise $90,000, and with your help, we won't have to come back to CPC next year. Peg, let me, let me add this to you. Have you checked out the Massachusetts Historical Commission? Because I think they give grants to historical buildings for ADA accessibility. I think that's allowable. And what they do is they have people apply for $100,000 grants and they never give more than 50. But if it is eligible, and what are you like, the, the oldest Girl Scout house in New England or something close yes, to yeah. mm -hmm. I think- uh, We did look into them, Larry, a, a few years ago. They weren't giving out grants at that time, but I can always check again this year. Maybe they've got again. more money. Because if you can get 50 from them and um, have a year to raise more money and come back next year, you know, you might be in a much different position. And thank, thank you for understanding and um, thank you. Thanks, Peg. Well, thank you for your time. Sure, okay. Okay, now to the country club pool. That's Charlie, you wanna kick it off since you're the liaison? Sure. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so we received a um, application from the country club for um, a new pool, which we, we I think we're, we're all familiar with. And uh, I think one of the we had brought, brought this discussion up previously that uh, we had asked that their application also include um, cost estimates, which we've also discussed this evening. And uh, I'm pleased to report that they submitted an application that was was very thorough. Um, it had um, assessors. It, it had. It was. It was. In my, in my view, it was complete, um, and it also included architectural designs as well as uh, cost estimates for the full project. Um, so, as it is a recreational um, require rec falls under recreation, um, and I, I believe it's it's a, it's a full report. So, happy to have any discussions on it. Anybody? Does anybody see the pool application as not eligible to go forward? No. Okay. Move forward. <laughs> okay. So if I now I'm going to say, okay, the pool application is eligible to go forward, this is your time to say, wait, Larry, I'm afraid of the water or whatever you need to say. Move forward, Larry. 
Okay, so the pool goes forward. And the last two are both Kirstens and they're both on the Hingham Rec and one is for the hockey court at Cronin and one is for the basketball court. So Kirsten, you could do, you're welcome to do one at a time. And I don't, maybe you've even done an, an initial site visit with Mark, I don't know. Uh, not with Mark, but I am familiar with both properties. Um, the hockey court is being asked for $289,815. Um, as always, he seems to have every duck in a row um, provided with his uh, final application. So they have provided um, timelines. They provided um, the estimates, the costs, pictures, they're all in the final. Um, it didn't seem to me that anything was missing and I would suggest it move forward. Okay. And, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead, we want to do one at a time. Okay. Oh yeah, and the other one, I'm sorry. No, okay, let's do that one. Does anybody have any issues with the hockey court application? Okay, so I'm gonna take that as a no and that it's eligible. Okay, so okay. now on the, to the basketball court. The other application is for the basketball, also at Cronin Field. The request is for $153,525.50 down to the penny. Um, again, there are um, timelines, uh, permission from stakeholders, estimates, pictures, um, very thorough and everything is necessary under rec. Okay, anybody else? Okay, so I'm gonna name the seven that I think we have determined are eligible final applications to go forward. And um, after I name them, I'm gonna ask if anybody disagrees that there are more or fewer here than I think. And then I'm gonna ask you if you feel that we should vote that these are eligible to go forward. So first, let me just name them. Um, Hingham Housing Authority, Scotland Street envelope, Hingham Housing Authority, Thaxter Street, Fire Doors, um, the Affordable Housing Trust application, the Habitat for Humanity application for the two um, units on Whiting Street, the pool at the Country Club, the hockey court, and the basketball court. Did I miss anything or add anything I shouldn't have? No. Okay. We, the committee has never voted in the past um, whether to go forward. This vote is probably less important than the other one because I don't have unilateral authority here, even though I didn't use it. Like it was, you know, this was an us thing. But if anybody on the committee feels that we should vote that these seven are going forward, I'll entertain a motion. Otherwise, I, I move that we should vote on this level of application. Does anybody second it? I'll second it. Okay, any discussion? No. Okay, so Bob, you just wanna word that. Um, I move that we vote on the eligibility of the final applications. Yeah, so uh, should I name them? I mean, no. you, I'll have, you can name them, but the, the fact is that I move that we vote on the list that Larry Linder has read of the final uh, applications that should move forward or eligible to mm -hmm. move forward. Megan, can you just re-second that? I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? Okay, so we'll do a, a all in favor. So Larry, yes. Bob? Aye. Vicki? Yes. Kirsten? Yes. Megan? Yes. Charlie? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Okay, great. So um, we have seven, before we get to questions, discussions on subjects not on the agenda, we have seven applications. And in my head, I was thinking if we have more than six, we should split this between 
October 30th and October 31st, do four one day and three on another. However, I'm not, I don't, if you all, I, what I'm asking you guys is do you wanna do all seven on Saturday the 30th? So yes, any, Larry. No. I mean, two of them are at Cronin Field. We're not doing the, um, we obviously don't need the affordable housing trust that we're not visiting that. Good one, good. Uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, where Scotland Street is two, correct? No, because one is Scotland is Street one and one and is Baxter Baxter Street. the other. Yeah. And um, okay, but that's Baxter fine. is near the, high, uh, the uh, pool. I think we can do it in one. Okay. Yeah, because um, we can be fast if you don't if you don't talk so much. We can be very fast. <laughs> Good luck. So the two the two sports course courts, yes, they're together. The affordable housing trust we don't need to visit. So it really is kind of right. five visits. So right. I'll be sending out. Um, and this this is an open meeting, and I'll be you know posting an agenda, but I'll be sending everybody a schedule of when you know what we're starting with, and it's usually we need about a half hour and depending on where in town to drive to, I'll figure that out. So, but you, you should assume we're going to go till about noon on Saturday the 30th. And I'll, I'll get that information out to everybody well before then. And then um, are there any questions or discussion on subjects that were not on the agenda? Okay. Does anybody on um, the advisory committee want to say anything? add anything to this discussion, comment, something we should go back to. Megan Demore, are you looking for hand waves? Don't see any hands. Okay. And um, I don't, I'm not looking for the meeting to go on and on, but does anybody else have anything that they would like to say before we uh, make a motion to adjourn? Anybody, Megan Demore? Nope, okay. not on my end. Okay, so I will um, entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make so a moved. motion to adjourn. Okay, who said so moved? Bob, okay, so Megan, you got that in. Mickey seconded. So we have to do an all in favor. So Larry, aye. Bob? Aye. Vicki? Aye. Charlie's an aye. Megan? Aye. Megan, you said aye? Yes. Okay, and Kevin? Aye. And Kirsten. Aye. Great. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll see you on the morning of Saturday the 30th. Have a great night. Night, everybody. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Good night.